The 33rd episode of Ghost Game was one of the most shocking and darkest Digimon episodes ever, just kind of casually depicting the gruesome death of one of the main characters, having that Digidestin being caught in a deadly explosion, being hit by a car, knocking his skull against a curb, only to visit Purgatory where a horrifying Majora's Mask looking Digimon tried to pull him permanently into the afterlife. Tonally, this was a super surprising and dark one. Over and over I kept asking, are they really doing this? I had a great time with it, but I was asking myself, if they ever dub Ghost Game and release it in the West, they might have to skip this one because you know the one where Kiyoshiro is murdered over and over again might be pushing it. Let's unpack the episode really process what we just saw for Kiyoshiro and we'll talk about all the returning Digimon and references to past episodes that really helped tie the events of the series together in a satisfying way this week. Right off the bat we get the return of Piximon or Picklemon as the Crunchyroll subtitles say and that's kind of interesting. It won't be the last returning Digimon in this episode though I would argue we actually got one too many returning Digimon. We'll get to that. You may know what I mean already. Piximon accidentally kills Kiyoshiro by setting off a bomb in his dorm room the start of the episode, mind you. We're talking like 30 seconds or less into the episode, so immediately the tone and feel of this one is incredibly strange and fast. Kiyoshiro awakes floating through a tunnel, and after going towards the light like a typical depiction of going into the afterlife, he finds himself in a flower field, then a black and white version of his dorm. He hears a voice that isn't his and isn't Jellymon's, but soon Jellymon snaps him out of it and returns him to the real world in his real dorm where he's ridiculed by Piximon and the others for being a wimp, even though he just survived a literal bombing. So was that black and white world a dream? Not quite. He comes back, but a voice he heard in that afterlife is echoing through his head. Kiroshiro then tries to live his life, but is still hearing voices in his head, always threatening his life. For example, one of the quotes is, a big boulder makes your head go splat. Deeply threatening. Kyo takes it so seriously that he goes to get an MRI scan, which is quite dark and kind of sad, very serious. After the human doctor says nothing is wrong, we then see a Mamimon return for a consultation. It's always a pleasure seeing our second ever antagonist from episode 2 return. And we get up close looks at the great new outfits for Kyoshiro and Ruli. These are, I suppose, the summer outfits. We saw the transition during a previous season from fall to winter, and I appreciate the animation staff giving the characters so many outfit changes in this show. In the many weeks since we last saw Mamimon, he developed a sort of sedative for Digimon that will put them in a state between living and dead. He says, quote, we don't want a repeat of what happened with Morphemon. That's the third reference to past episodes, all very casual but kind of cool. Mamimon offers Kyo the serum thinking the only way to learn more is to repeat what happened last time and go back to that purgatory. Again, super bizarre and dark tone, Mamimon is offering to put Kiyoshiro in like a medically induced coma in this what is essentially a kid's show. Kyo refuses the serum however, one because he's not a Digimon and two because he simply doesn't want to go back to that black and white purgatory world. So he goes on with his life and narrowly avoids near death experiences like heavy building attachments falling on him, slipping in the washroom and almost cracking his skull on like a urinal I think that was. Then it seems he's straight up hit by a car. I don't know how the show got away with this. It's absolutely nuts. He ends up in the black and white world again where he finally comes face to face with the voice. It's a little monkey Digimon named Sepikmon with a cool mask that at times from certain angles has this very Majora's Mask look to it. Sepikmon says quote this is right between your world and the afterlife. I've never had a friend who wasn't a Digimon. I'm so excited. When humans die they cross that river. Referring to the river Styx. Let's cross the river so so we can be friends. Before we get into the resurrection of Kyoshiro, you know, how he returns from the afterlife, the sponsor of today's video, Bai wants to say hello. In the off chance that you've never heard of them, Bai is a proxy shipping service, which means they'll make all kinds of Japanese exclusive merch available to you wherever you are on planet Earth. With Bai, you can shop on Japanese retail sites like Rakuten and Amazon JP. You select what you want, then Bai essentially purchases it on your behalf and sends it to you wherever you are. I used Bai to buy extra DIM cards for my vital bracelet, Digivice V, and they have a million other things for fans of Digivice. Digimon and other anime like Demon Slayer, Spy X Family, literally anything. There's even a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you sign up to buy E for the first time using the link in my description, you're going to be getting a 2,000 yen coupon for your first order. That's around 20 US dollars off an order just for signing up and just for being a fan of the Digino. I'm super grateful for buy E. When I was a kid, there were so many things I would see online that I could never have because they were Japan exclusive. Now, in today's world, Japan exclusive is not even really a thing thanks to services like buy E. Thanks again to Bai for sponsoring the video. Now back to the discussion. Back in the human world, Kyoshiro's body has been taken to the hospital and Hiro is trying to talk to the nurse transporting Kyoshiro's body, only it's not a normal nurse. Oh god, it's Betsumon. He's he's back, unfortunately. Quote, I only came because Clockmon told me to. What a pain. So Betsumon is surprisingly useful in transporting Kyoshiro's body to a room where a real human doctor won't be, and instead Mamimon can 
I guess, assess Kiyoshiro and do his thing. Here we learn that Kiyoshiro actually dodged the car, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense, because him getting hit by a car would be too violent. But then they tell us while he dodged the car, he hit his skull on the curb, which is a traumatic injury on its own. Like, I don't know if the Digimon team doesn't know how intense head injuries are, but that is an extremely dangerous trauma, and Kiyoshiro threw himself, like, headfirst into that pavement. But again, Digimon Ghost Game tells us that the head curb collision is less deadly than getting hit by the truck, so sure, okay. Okay, back in Purgatory, Kyo is hunted through the black and white space, has this real Jurassic Park moment hiding under the desk from Sepikmon. He's then running through the black and white world with a phone that doesn't work, but his vital bracelet is going off the charts. He runs into a convenience store, buys a cable that will plug his phone into his vital bracelet. If I understood the scene correctly, he's able to power his phone through his vitals via his vital bracelet. It's certainly interesting. It's like a portable battery bank, but his heart is the battery powering his afterlife phone. You know, his heart charges the watch, and the watch charges his phone. Miraculously, with the charged phone, he's able to communicate across planes of existence and tells the team what's happening to him. Mummymon then reminds the team of the serum he created, and for a second, it looks like Hito might volunteer to be injected and risk his own life to save Kyo's when Jellymon steps up. Mummymon acknowledges that, quote, it will also make you excited for unknown reasons, which is pretty funny. It's technically kind of a stretch and also unnecessary because Jellymon is already super energized and excited as is, but I love this and I love what we get out of it as a result of Jellymon being hopped up on like near-death energy serum. So when Jellymon arrives in the purgatory world, she's absolutely fired up and tells Sepikmon, darling is all, all, all mine. Seeing Tesla Jellymon hopped up on drugs kind of rules as if she needed more energy. She defeats Sepikmon before he can pull Kiyoshiro across the river Styx into the afterlife. Mind you, before the fight kicked off, Kyo was kicking and screaming and shouting things like, I don't want to die, which again, broken record here, but wow, this is all ridiculously dark and I don't know how this would ever go over if the show ever makes it to the West. After winning the battle, Kyo and Jellymon wake, and we also see that Sepikmon managed to get back into the human world, in the land of the living. Apparently, Jellymon brought him over to punish him for his deeds. Mummymon says that this Digimon isn't suited to live in the city because it's kind of a jungle Digimon, and then they sent him somewhere I didn't really understand. If you come to my video for clarity on things like this, I'm sorry I let you down this week. I thought maybe it was going to be like a cemetery or something, but I didn't really understand what we were looking at, where Sepikmon ended. I have to imagine cultural differences are at play here that impacted our understanding of that scene. Please, if you understood where Sepikmon ended up in the last 15 seconds and why it was sent there, why that was kind of relevant, let us know by leaving a comment below. I'll pin it if it's the perfect explanation. Sorry again for not having the answer myself. So those last 15 seconds aside, I have to say I enjoyed the hell out of this episode. It was extremely weird and jaw-dropping on multiple occasions. Everything from the multiple deaths of Kyoshiro to the returning Digimon and acknowledging of past story beats was super enjoyable. This is an episode premise I never in a million years thought we'd see in a Digimon show, or really any show that is family friendly like this. We talk about how this show is episodic, monster of the week, and how we want more story progress, and I'm not gonna get into all that this week, other than to say, you have to give them credit. I mean, 33 weeks in, and they're still coming up with ridiculously unique premises like this one. Say what you will about monster of the week formats, it can't be easy to keep it fresh and unique, and this episode was fresh and unique for sure, there's no denying that. Let me know what you thought of this one in the comments, I still can't believe what I just watched. It was such a weird experience. Leave a comment to let me know if you understood the last 15 seconds of this one, like culturally or whatever, you know, where Sepikmon went and why that was important. Please tell me in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you can. Have a great week and I'll see you in the next one.